Halle Berry, it's so great to see you. Thank you so much for doing our show. Uh, tonight's show, At Home Edition. This means a lot to a lot of people. So thank you, thank you, thank you so much. Thank you for having me. I love that you're doing this, you know, in this time, Jimmy, because it's keeping people, you know, it's keeping their spirits up too. And it's giving us entertainment and giving us a chance to laugh because sometimes it, it's getting a little heavy for people. Yeah, it is. How are you hanging in there? Who are you quarantined with? I'm quarantined with my two children, my two dogs. And it's tight on us sometimes. My, my daughter's fine. She hopes quarantine never ends. She, she loves going to school. She's a loner. She loves being, you know, nestled in. My son, who's six, is like a madman right now. He's, he's bouncing off the walls. He, he just doesn't know what's happening. It, it's really oh, see, hard. I don't know that because all I have is two girls. So they're just both like, they, they sit there and they're, they like, you know, they love school. They think it's, you know, it's part of their <laughs> thing. They love it. Well, the one, the little one doesn't like it as much, but she's only in like kindergarten. She wants to run around and do stuff. Yeah, well, you're a girl dad, so I, I, I'm, I'm, a, I'm a boy mom. <laughs> we almost needed a few trips to the hospital, but it's like, we ain't going to the hospital. <laughs> like, when no one's going, we're like, calm down. <laughs> but you we're said that you had, what, you told me that you had one thing happen with your daughter. What happened with her? It involved her hair. Oh, my God. Oh, yeah. <laughs> tell me so, the story. So, you know, we are swimming every day. Like we're so fortunate that we do have a pool and I'm, I'm grateful in these times that we do have a pool. So it's one of the only ways we get exercise and we have to get exercise, right? So yeah. we, we stopped our hikes and all the nature walks we did. So we swim every day. So every day we're swimming, we get out of the pool. My daughter's 12. And so every time I go to comb her hair, she's like, no, don't touch me. I can handle it. I'm a tween. I don't need you to brush my hair. So I'm like, cool, I, I won't touch your hair. So two nights ago, we're doing homework together, and she says, Mom, um, Daddy, don't be mad at me, but, like, um, oh, who's that? Hey, hey, Winnie, come on. You can go say hi, say hi to him. Hi. This is Winnie. Hi, Winnie. How are you? <laughs> She's oh, telling you fun. Stuff. dress, Winnie. Look. <gasps> Oh, it's kind of on the same fashion. Like the same mess. <gasps> How cool is that? Blue. <laughs> what? Blue though. Hers is blue. I know, but yours has blue. Mine has purple too. Mine has more purple. It does, but it's the same idea, Winnie. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Sorry about that. That's Winnie gonna happen. I apologize. <laughs> that's gonna happen. It's gonna. It's been happening. It happens that's all that's the time. It. She happen? just walks right in in the middle of the thing, and yeah, that's the way it works. But I want to tell her the story so she knows. So you're, when oh, she becomes yes. 12. Yes, Winnie, don't, don't let this happen. So jump to, she, we're doing her homework the other night, and she goes, Mom, I, I'm scared to tell you this, but like, touch the back of my head. All her hair, which is like past her shoulders, has shrunken up into a tight ball that feels like matted fur. Like, I can't even get my finger in it. And I'm pulling, and it's like, and she's screaming. So I said, honey, oh, God, oh, God. And I'm trying to stay calm. I'm like, okay, this, this, is, this is cool. Let's just go in the shower, put some conditioner on it, and just this is going to be cool. Get in the shower. 30 minutes later, it's getting tighter. Oh, no, oh, no, oh, no, oh, no, oh, no. What are you? Don't I even tell me. I had to shave it off. I had you to give a not. head. <laughs> no. Just shaved it off? Was I had to cool shave it off. Um, she, she was not cool with that, but it was our <laughs> only option. <laughs> oh only option. my God. So, but now like she gets it. I was like, first of all, maybe you'll let your mother help you. And second of all, you've learned, you got to brush your hair, dog. Like every day you got to brush your hair. <laughs> yeah. She's like, yeah. In quarantine. We're not going anywhere. So why did I have to brush my hair? I said, this is why you have to brush your hair. So you're not a big deal. Hi girl. again. Hi Winnie. <laughs> Did you just hear that story? This is why you have to brush your hair, Wynn. Because guess what? Her daughter didn't brush her hair. And she, started, she got a big knot in the back of her hair. And then she, guess what she did? She can tell you. What? I had to shave her hair off. Yeah. She's bald in the back. <laughs> we shave it all up. So see, listen to mommy and daddy, OK? okay. Always right. brush your hair, Winnie. <laughs> She's already learning lessons from you. Thank you for uh, teaching my daughter. I appreciate it. <laughs> hey, you know, I saw your name uh, a couple times. You were in uh, D-Nice's Club Quarantine. 
Oh my God, I love it. I love how it. Great, how great is that thing? It's so amazing. Like that dude is saving lives too. Like it's just, really and you is. know what's so weird about it? It feels like it's real, right? It feels like I'm really in a club with some people that I know, but I don't know. And I imagine what everybody looks like and it's like a good, it's a good vibe. And I'm also teaching my kids about old school music because he plays the stuff I grew up on. They don't know nothing about that. So I, I know like, you know, introduce them to the music that I love. So it's been really fun for us. How, how did you hear about it? Um, my, one of my managers told me about it. They're like, do you, have you heard about what D-Nice is doing? I said, no. So she sent me there like day two. And I've been like just trying to make time in my schedule to go there as much as I can. I mean, I'm a mom, so, you know, I don't have as much time to be clubbing as <laughs> mothers do, but I try to get there yeah. whenever I can. Well, people were calling you the first lady of club quarantine because anytime you came on, <laughs> everyone went nuts. They're like, oh my God, how there's it here? How there's it? It was like crazy. But I, I, I love it because it is kind of exciting because you're, you're listening to music too at home and you're doing, and then if you see a name pop up or he'll give you a shout out, it just makes everyone like, oh, we're all in this together, man. I know. Like Mariah Carey came in the other night and I fanned out. I was like, oh, my God. <laughs> me. Oh. <laughs> That's, uh, it's fun. It's yeah. good. Uh, before, the, before the virus hit, you were uh, working on your di directorial debut uh, for a movie called Bruised, uh, which sounds great. Do we know when it's going to come out or, or not yet? Well, it was supposed to come out, you know, in the fall this year, but now with everything that's happening, I think most productions are sort of in flux right now. The good thing is at least we finished it pretty much. So uh, we have it kind of in the can, but when it'll actually come out, I, I don't know when we're going to be back to the movies and when we will, you know, life will get back to normal, but I, know, I, did. I hope it's soon. <laughs> you, you definitely did it. What, it's called Bruised. And called Bruised. What, what made you choose this movie? Or as you told me, the movie said, the movie kind of chose you. Yeah, it did. It's, it's a movie about a, a sort of a disgraced MMA fighter, sort of in the, the middle towards probably the end of her career. And it's sort of the journey she goes through to uh, get her son back that she left when he was very young and then get her sense of self and her career back. And it, it's a movie that got sat down on my lap three years ago. And it just, it just, it's one of those stories that just, it just gripped me. I understood the depth of this woman's pain. I understood um, what she was fighting for. It's very redemptive. And I got to rewrite the movie and set it in a, in a world that I understood for a woman my age. It was really re originally written for a 21 year old white Irish Catholic girl in her early twenties. And so I got to reimagine it for someone like me, which was really fun. And that's great. I set out to find a director and no director I talked to really got it how I got it. So. I ended up being called upon to be the director, which I never would in my mild and wildest dream thought I'm going to direct myself. And my Sometimes friends. you just got to do it, right? You got to do it. You just got to, you just got to, when the universe calls, man, you got to answer. You, you know? Just try and go, I don't know what this is, but we're trying, man. Let's do it. That's but you're it. a tough, you're a tough cookie, man. We, last time we talked was with, for John Wick 3, which you were amazing in and people freaked uh, out and you were awesome. Really, it was sick. And you, I think we were talking about, I think you broke like three ribs doing that. If I'm not mistaken, um, how about this movie? I mean, <laughs> MMA fighting, you can't, you can't really fake this fighting, right? No. So, you know, I broke some stuff <laughs> on this one. And you know what? It's okay. I always get hurt. But I realize that when you go hard, you're bound to get hurt. You know, when you do your own stunts, you're bound to get hurt. And in this movie, I was fighting the real UFC flyweight champion, Valentina Chevchenko. And you know what? She had to throw some real kicks and I had to really take them, and that really broke some bones. <laughs> oh my gosh. I mean, she's a beast, but really I could have asked for a better teacher, a better scene mate, a better fight partner. Like, she just brought so much reality to it for me. I, I, at times, I felt like I was really fighting. Like, our, our um, referee um, that was uh, in the movie is, is a real referee. And he said a couple times, he says, man, I thought I was watching a real fight because she just brought so much power and authenticity to our fight scene. So, you know, it's par for the course. Was there ever a time in the, any of the movies you've done where you did a fight scene and it was embarrassing you were like, or something, some action scene, you were like, ugh, that was so bad. Not an action scene, but one time I was doing a scene with Pierce Brosnan in um, Die Another Day. And- um, Yes. I, I, I was supposed of course. To <laughs> like, 
Dude, of I'm not supposed to be all sexy and like trying to seduce him with a fig and then I end up choking on it. <laughs> and then he had to get up and like do the Heimlich. <laughs> no! So not sexy, like so not sexy. <laughs> But he did the I'm like, yeah, you never see that in a James Bond movie, right? Oh, the- what you should have seen it. Like James <laughs> Bond knows how to Heimlich. Like he 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 was there for me. He will always be one of my favorite people in the whole world. Like he can oh, Pierce. Uh- uh-huh. on and on and on. Uh, and it's on and on and on.